What up, what up? You don't know what time it be. No, you don't. It's 9.44. It's your boy Hotshot coming back with another video. In this video, let's talk about some HOS changes. Hours of service, baby. Let's talk about the new hours of service. Um, what about new hours of service they just changed? So, uh, a lot of people were hoping for some things that they didn't get some things they did get unfortunately for us it almost nothing uh, unless you're a short hauler I mean there's little changes but it's nothing to you know really help you help you so let's start with number one so it says this is the summary 49 CFR parts 385 and 395. That's what this is. FMCSA revises the hours of service regulations to provide greater flexibility to drivers subject to those rules without adversely affecting safety. Okay? So number one, expand the short haul exemption to 150 air miles and allow a 14-hour work shift to take place as part of the exemption so you used to be able to if you're local you can do 100 air miles obviously this is CDL non-CDL same thing so 150 air miles you can now run it was previously 100 and you used to be able to work a 12 hour shift it doesn't matter if you're working, if you're driving, doesn't matter what you're doing. Clock in, clock out, 12 hours. Well, you know, in the truck. Like from the time you leave the shop to the time you get back, 12 hours. If you're working around the shop, you can work late. But now it's 14 hours. So if you're a local CDL guy, that helps you. That does help. Number two. Expand the driving window during adverse driving conditions by an additional two hours. Okay? So, if you're stuck in a blizzard, if you're stuck in, you know, wind, you know, anything, rain, sleet, snow. Now, you can't say, oh, it's raining. That's an adverse driving condition. It's got to affect, you know, your driving. I'm going to do some research in the future to find out what that actually means. And I'm going to let you know. Number three. Require a 30-minute break after eight hours of drive time. Not on duty. Drive time. It used to be if you start at 9, by 5 o'clock in the afternoon, you need an eight-hour break. It's not that way anymore. If you drive for eight hours, you need a 30-minute break. And allowing an on-duty, not driving period to qualify as a required break. So, if you're on-duty, not driving, loading, waiting on the shipper, whatever you're doing, doesn't matter. It's your break. So you, your break is now not a break from working. It's a break from driving. So you don't need a break for your shift. You need a break for your driving, if that makes sense. Number four. This is the biggest change they've made. And unfortunately, us hot shots, it doesn't affect, but I will find a way to get this to happen. Number four. Modify the sleeper burst ex exemption to allow a driver to meet 10 hour minimum off duty requirement by spending at least seven rather than at least eight hours of that period in the berth and a minimum off duty period of at least two hours spent inside or outside of the berth. Provided the two periods total at least 10 hours. 
in that neither qualifying period counts against the 14 hour driving window. So, you can now do the 7-3 or the 8-2 split. But, what they're doing right now is there is people, they're fighting this. A lot is like, no, this isn't good enough. I think what a lot of people want is for us to be able to pause our clock. Which kind of makes sense, you know? But that's not what we got. All right, fellas, let's talk some definition. Definitions. What is an adverse driving condition? If unexpected adverse driving conditions slow you down, you may drive an extra two hours to complete what you have been driving in normal commission or normal conditions. And adverse driving conditions means things that you did not know about when you started your run, like snow, fog, or shut down on traffic due to crash. Adverse driving conditions do not include situations that you should have known about, such as congested traffic during typical rush hour period. So if you're going through Chicago at four o'clock in the afternoon, it's not a it's not an adverse driving condition. You go through Chicago at midnight and the road shut down because of an accident or fatality, boom, extend your clock. But from what I'm reading here, you can only drive up, you can drive up to 13 hours, but to, ex to complete what you normally would have been able to complete. So, from my understanding, if you were down for 45 minutes you get to add 45 minutes because it says to complete what you could have driven in normal conditions so if you were down for 30 minutes you can't extend it two hours you have you just finished your planned rep 650 700 miles you can't extend it out to do 900 miles. It does not work that way. All right, guys. So I am going to read you the 8-2 split. I'm going to be honest with you. It doesn't make much sense. It does, but it doesn't. Because, you can, yes, you can pause your time. So I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to give you the example that I understand that you can use. So... And this is what they say. We'll say it up front. The 8-2 split rule is a complicated mess. It confuses people more than any other rule. And it's so complicated and rarely gives any real advantage to the driver that some fleets don't even allow it. But it's legal. So, normally 10 consecutive hours of off-duty slash sleeper time is required to reset the 11 and 14 hour clock. However, these 10 hours can sometimes be split up into two segments. This is called the 8-2 split or sleeper split. If the driver works part of his day, but has some time left on his 11 or 14 clocks, he can stop early and take at least eight hours straight in the sleeper berth. Not off duty, sleeper berth. You cannot do that in a hot shot unless you have a legal dimensional with the what with the um the netting sleeper berth. So it says after hold on. He takes eight straight hours in the sleeper berth. During these eight hours, his 14-hour clock does not keep ticking. And obviously, neither does your, four, does your 11. So after eight full hours, the driver can get up and drive for any time he had remaining on his 11. And 14 from before his eight-hour rest. 
once that leftover time is done, he must take at least a two-hour break. Now, here's where things get complicated. It's not quite as simple as the last paragraph makes it sound. Imagine the driver started his day with a full 11 hours of drive time and drove for two hours. Then he took eight hours in sleeper berth. He gets up and still has nine hours of his 11 hour clock left over to use. Great, so he drives for those nine hours and now he has to stop and take a two hour break. After the two hour break, does he basically have a complete 10 hour break? Can he get up and drive another full 11 hours? No way. That would be 20 hours of driving with only two hours of rest in the middle, which the DOT would flag as a huge violation. Instead, after every partial rest break, eight hours or two hours, the driver must count the driving time from before that rest against his current clock. So let's go back to the example. The driver starts his day with a full 11. He drives for two hours, then he takes eight hours in the sleeper berth. He wakes up, he's just had a partial rest. So he has to look at the time he used up before the rest. He used up two hours already, leaving him nine to drive, just like before. So he drives those nine hours and now he needs to stop and take a two hour break. He wakes up after two hours. Here's the important part. He's again had a partial rest two hours. So he has to look at the driving time he already used before it. Just before the two hour rest, he drove for nine hours. So that means he can only use the time left over after burning the nine hours. Meaning he can drive for two hours before he hits his 11 hour total and has to stop again. At that point, he can take full eight hour break or he can take another eight hour break to begin another split. But the same rule always applies after a partial rest. Eight or two, you can only drive the time left over on your 11 hour clock. And after subtracting out the drive time done before, note that we use the 11 hour drive time for rule for this example but the 14 hour rule works the same way it's also important to know that this is this doesn't matter whether the two hour segment or the eight hour segment comes first but while the eight hour segment does not count against the 14 hour clock the two hour segment does and while the eight hour segment must be all sleeper berth the two hour segment can be sleeper or off duty or any combination of those two. It's complicated. So, what I would do if I was in, a, if I was, you know, in that sleeper or whatever, but I don't think it's really beneficial, but I would do five and a half, take my eight. Five and a half, take my two. Five and a half, take my eight. Five and a half, take my two. Does that make sense? That's about the only way I could see it making sense. And if you keep doing that, then you never have to really reset from my understanding. Because you won't go over your 70. You know what I mean? Because you're... I don't think you should. Um... But like I said, I'm not a, um, I I'm not a expert, so I'm just telling you my understanding, and that's the definition of that. So I probably wouldn't be doing it. Um, I mean, it just sounds easier to just do the 10 hours and be done. Now, if you drive three hours and you go to pick up and it takes you eight hours or six or seven hours to pick up, I'm doing the eight two split. You know what I mean? So, but I'm not doing it just to do it. It would not make sense. 
and as a car hauler, I don't think you could see any benefit to it unless you used your two hours first. Like if I drove three hours, then I took my two hour break, then I drove nine hours and took my eight in the sleeper, I guess that would make sense, but you know, you're still under your 14, so it wouldn't matter. So the 8-2 split is complicated, but you can also now do that as a 7-3. So you can drive 5, take 7, drive 5, take 3, drive 5, take 7, drive 5, take 3. You know, and that doesn't sound bad, but if you wake up at 8 o'clock, are you really going to be able to sleep? at one o'clock for eight hours i don't think so so guys i'm i'm gonna stick with what i got but i would like to have it available so i'm probably gonna try to move some stuff around here uh, i think my problem is gonna be the the dimensions so i don't know what we're gonna do yet but we'll figure it out look at this hard worker my money. Okay. Hard worker. You know, and they said my dog has a rough life. So, alright guys. That's the new hours of service. In the comments, let me know what you think about them. I don't like them. I don't see much of a point in them for me. It's nice that I can do my 30 hour or 30 minute on duty, but the 30 minute never bothered me. Because I usually spend 30 minutes off duty anyway. Now, there is some times when I am really bad at not catching it, like, pulling out too soon. I don't know why, but I'm bad for that. So, all right, guys. Like, share, subscribe. Hit that ding, ding. And I will see you tomorrow. Peace.